there, it's Dawn, and welcome to Indigo Bohemian Art, where things are really messy today. Um, I just did a video where I did a swipe and balloon kiss, and I don't even know if I'm going to show you guys that one, because <laughs> it's, it didn't turn out quite as expected. But I have all this leftover paint, and I have this gravy separator, and there's a little bit of paint in it, because I had a ton of it on the table, I'm like, I'm not wasting that. So... I thought I would do a ring pour through a gravy separator and I would use these lovely spring colors that I have going on here. So we got green and white in here so far. And yeah, I think I'm going to go with the blues and then the pinks. And we'll see what we come up with. The white has no silicone in it. Let's just, let's just be creative here. Let's just kind of drizzle it in there any old way. And all these other colors had just a drop of coconut milk serum in them. Just a drop. And I have these other greens. You know what I think might be cool too is doing a gravy separator pour through sink strainer. I already semi-botched one painting today, so I'm not going to push my luck. But you never know. This could turn out pretty cool. I want the colors to blend some in here, so I pour them from up high. There's more, a little more blue on top before I put the pinks and reds in. Mainly because we don't want to make mud. Nobody likes the mud. I'll do the pink instead. Maybe the, maybe the pink will make friends with the blue and give us some purple tones. That, that could be nice. So I'm all about experimenting. I mean, I've been doing the pouring for over a year now, <clears throat> and I've learned a lot. Like, your hands get messy. Um, <laughs> And, you know, a lot of people have questions about, well, I can't get my paint the right consistency. And that's something I think you just kind of um, eventually um, get a feel for intuitively. I, I like to mix my paint about the consistency of warmed honey or melted ice cream. But melted good ice cream, you know, not that cheap stuff. That turns back into white water. Um, yeah, let's go with the red. I figured, well, you know, if this turns out butt ugly, I don't have to show it to you. <laughs> but I am glad that you tuned in. And I'm, I'm glad that you come along for the ride with me because, I mean, it's nice to watch the videos and get a feel for all that you can do with acrylic pouring, but I just encourage you to experiment for yourself. I know we, none of us likes to waste paint. <laughs> That's kind of a big one for all of us, isn't it? Well, I don't want to waste my paint. And you know what? I hear you. Okay, I'm not going to put any more green in because I don't want that to go muddy there. Of course, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to pour out, seeing as how instead of coming off top, it's going to come out the spout. So the paints are going to blend a little bit differently than what we would normally expect. I think I have enough here to do. The size of a canvas. I'm sorry, I know sometimes I pause when I'm talking, but literally it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I'm thinking about the painting. I'm thinking about, I'm mixing the paint and I'm trying to talk to you. And it is a little more tricky than walking and chewing gum. Maybe only slightly, but it is tricky. <laughs> and I'm going to put the rest of the weight in. There's not much. I'll get it in there. All right. <clears throat> Yes, my, like I said, I was, I was pouring earlier and so my, 
my table is messy. So I've got these colors in here, and I know the silicone is doing its thing. And I'm just debating if you want to do a ring pour or just a straight pour today. I think we'll just do a straight pour because we have absolutely no idea what's going on in there. Well, interesting. There was green and white in the bottom, but I think it's coming out. It's just, ooh. There is some really neat looking color combinations happening there. This may be a prettier pour than I expected, which is nice because that last one, like I said, I don't even know if I'm going to show it to you. I might though, because I think it's a good learning experience. Watch somebody else make mistakes so you don't have to make the same ones. Oh, I think that this could turn out really nice. And normally I wouldn't do a pour with silicone, but this is the paint I had, so. The end result could be pretty cool. Or it could be Oh my gosh, this is not my day for painting. In which case, <clears throat> this video won't see the light of day. <laughs> <clears throat> it looked like enough paint. I'm thinking this is what, is this, oh, this 12 by 12 or 14 by 14? I think it's 14 by 14, so I don't know. I'm going to, there's still a little bit of paint in there, so I'm going to, I'm going to coax it out. back to the middle here and see maybe a little more to come out all right I don't think it wants to come out very much more so I'm already dirty but I'll take my ring off and oh there's some neat things happening little cells I'm wondering if I should just put down this extra paint on the edges because, well, because it's here and no sense wasting it, so let's do that. So anyways, this other painting I was doing that you may or may not see, it was supposed to be reminiscent of peonies. But let's just say it doesn't look like peonies. But this one, it's kind of cool the way it is. But I'm going to take a minute and just, I'm going to put some paint on the corners because I have some paint that I can put on the corners. And There's that. Don't seem like they match too well, but you know what? That's okay. Enough of this one too, maybe. I mean, if we run out of paint, there's a whole bunch on my table here. But yeah, that's maybe not what we want to do. <clears throat> and what the heck? We'll put the red down over here. This is alizarin and crimson with a smidge of white in it. I was trying to make a dark pink. That was more of a cool pink than a dark pink. And yeah, it didn't do too bad. All right, well. Um. Since I'm already messy, I'm not even gonna bother with gloves. I think we'll just we'll just tilt this. Gravity is pulling it this way and that way, flattening it out. And it's got little. I have cups underneath, and it's kind of uh, you know following the shape of the cups. So well, let's let's see what we can make of this. 
I've never used the get gravy separator before. I watched a video where somebody did that. Oh my gosh, it must be probably a year ago. I think, I have a gravy separator. I could try that sometime. And then that time just never came until today. I'll we'll just kind of swirl this around. Try to stretch the stripes a bit. Quite a few cells happening in there, which is, I guess, to be expected since we did use silicone. I don't often use silicone in a straight or a ring form, but that's the paint we had, so that's the paint we used. All right. <clears throat> Actually, this this has potential if I can. Uh, I can stretch it properly, just stick my arm in some paint, because you know that that happens when you paint. So we're gonna get this corner a little better than what I just did. Catching the corner and tilting it back, easing the weight of the paint. The rings, it's, it's interesting how you get rings, even if you just straight pour and don't ring pour. Let it slow down a little bit. Patience is a virtue that I struggle with. <laughs> oh, get too excited about what's going on on the canvas and it's like, oh! It's gonna be so pretty, let's get it done, and yeah. That's not always the way to go. Let's kind of try to move it back to the center before we go back and try to do this side. Pretty, eh? <clears throat> it's kind of nice to get your hands in the paint. I know some people are concerned. Oh, but there's chemicals in the paint. And you know what? They may be right. There's also chemicals in the food and in the air that we breathe. And sometimes it's just nice to be really hands-on with your art, which is what I'm doing today with the lack of gloves, at least for this one anyway. I'm wondering if I should have maybe not used that bright green. Like, oh, maybe it's all right. Maybe it's all right. <clears throat> Maybe not with this color combination. However, let's persevere and get this. Well, let's see if we can move that back towards the center again. In all seriousness, it's turning out to be not a bad looking paint. Considering it's um, leftover paint from, from a painting that I thought I had thought through, <clears throat> excuse me, fairly thoroughly, but turns out I was wrong. I tell you guys that a lot, though. I was wrong about that. But I love this medium because I think because of the random elements to it. I mean, once you get a feel for how the paint is going to move, you can uh, you can kind of get an idea of what you want to do and just play. And playing is fun. I know I'm stretching this a bit, but I'm thinking I want to run some of these corner colors off a little bit. Just because I can. Just to make it a little more congruent. And we have the paint to be able to do it. Now those uh, bright green corners, I wonder if I should leave them or send them packing. I think I'll send them packing a little bit. 
mainly because there isn't a lot of the green showing through the painting where I poured. It's in there, it's just not... It's not being friendly and saying hello. So, I just run it off. That's the lovely thing about this medium. If you don't like something, just run it off. I'm just listening to the dripping going on here, thinking, oh, you're wasting paint. But the corner went up. Okay. Now, it's a little slippery when wet. Okay. So let's let's just try to run some of this heavy green off this corner. And then we'll use the weight of paint that we have left. Try to center the pattern a little bit. Come on. Yes. Okay. And now. <clears throat> Let's try to move the design down a little bit. I want to straighten those out. These lines, they, they, they look like they've, you know, and squish together and then just run them back a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, I'm kind of impressed that it turned out as well as it did. <laughs> Because if you saw the other painting in these colors, you go, oh my gosh. But anyway, <clears throat> the thing here is that the colors were put together in a different fashion and the paint reacted differently than it did in the swipe that I just did. So I have messy hands. I'm going to wash up and then I will come back and give you a close up. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> my hands are slightly cleaner than they were. I realized I didn't hit this with a torch, so I'm just going to do this right now, really quickly, before I do the close-up. The paint's been worked quite a bit between everything I've done to it, and I don't expect a whole lot more cells to pop up, and they're not. There's just a few. All right. So, let's go in here. So there's a little bit of grainy effect, and I think that is because there was one color that I mixed a little on the thin side. So it could be that the binders in the paint have separated more than we would have liked. But there is some really interesting things going on here. And cells, and surprisingly enough, the green doesn't show up except for in a few spots as green. It is mixed with the blue to make all kinds of turquoise and purples with the pinks. So, yeah, this is still a win. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I'm glad you were able to come and see what I was doing today. Um, yeah, just experimenting in the studio and seeing what we can come up with. And I encourage you to do the same. Go experiment and have fun. Get messy.
Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that you took some time to spend with me and my art. Now, before you go, be sure to hit like and subscribe and maybe check out a couple other videos. There's quite a few here. Thanks again for watching. You have a super day. Bye for now.